Sir. Nothing but you, 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 and the game, the game. The laser scope. You put it on, look through the crosshairs at the picture, and give it a voice command. Fire! This is called the Sega Activator, and what it truly it enables you to get involved in your video games right. with your entire body. It's a common fairy tale in the world of gaming. A company comes along with an accessory or controller that they claim is an exciting, innovative, and brand new way to play your home console games. A device that they promise will make your gameplay reflexes faster, more accurate, intuitive, and fun. Many of the more infamous attempts at reinventing the controller, such as Mattel's Power Glove, were relegated to the largely 2D, 8 and 16-bit generation of consoles. The Power Glove for your NES. Now you and the games are one. But in 1997, a company named Reality Quest threw their hat into the ring when they unveiled the glove at that year's E3. Initially released for the PlayStation and later the Nintendo 64, at first glance, it's easy to draw comparisons to the abysmally received NES Power Glove by Mattel. Not only are the names similar, but just like the Power Glove, Reality Quest The Glove fits over your hand and forearm, it has a panel with all of the standard controller buttons on it, as well as a few additional buttons for other features. And of course, the glove allows you to play games with just one hand. But that's where the similarities end. The glove received positive reviews, had a big budget advertising campaign, it was compatible with the entire PS1 and N64 library, and included forward-thinking features such as being able to accurately simulate analog controls in games that were originally designed for just digital input. That's a simulated analog. This works great for games like Duke Nukem or other shooter type games, where you need to be able to move slowly at times, faster other times. Despite all of this, the glove has been largely forgotten. So how well did the glove work, and why wasn't it a bigger success? From its even more obscure origins on the Super Nintendo, debut hype and demise, this is the story of The Glove. The Glove was released in the fourth quarter of 1997 for the original PlayStation, with a Nintendo 64 version following in 1998. However, The Glove's true origins date back to 1993, when brothers Noah and Adam Ullman created and patented technology based on wrist motion controls and founded a New York-based company, Anaphase Unlimited Incorporated, to sell their products. It wasn't long before gaming magazines began running short stories on the glove for the Super Nintendo. One Spanish-language magazine even claimed that it was going to be released for the Mega Drive. Ultimately, the Super Nintendo version of the glove was never released, no pictures were published, and the magazines that did write about it all used the same piece of concept art. As of the date of this video, no prototypes have even appeared in the wild. The PlayStation version of the glove made its debut at 1997's E3. Looking back through magazines discussing its E3 appearance as well as proper reviews, it's actually difficult to find anyone that said a negative word about the glove. Some even went as far as to praise it as the second coming of video game controllers. Reality Quest was quick to highlight the glowing reviews on their website as well as their many, many magazine advertisements. Backed by generally positive reviews and a holiday season release, the glove seemed poised to make a big splash in the gaming world. Retailing for $89.95, Reality Quest's PlayStation version of the glove was made available for purchase at major retailers across the United States the week of November 23, 1997, the same week as Black Friday. The glove could be found at stores like Babbage's, Best Buy, Electronics Boutique, Toys R Us, and more. Reality Quest marketed the glove as a way to not only play games with just one hand, but also as a way for gamers to play more quickly and accurately. In other words, Reality Quest was all but promising to make you a better player. The glove is going to be one of the hottest gifts under the tree this holiday season. The lucky owners will be the toughest video game competitors on the block. Adam Ullman, co-founder, Reality Quest. This is the final product, the Power Glove, the one you can buy in your local store. We use ultrasonics here to determine where the hand is in three-dimensional space, and we use geometry to figure that out. We have another technology in the fingers to figure out what your fingers are actually doing. Mattel's Power Glove for the Nintendo Entertainment System was notoriously difficult to set up, and if anything, made playing most games far more difficult. So how was Reality Quest Glove different? Just how exactly was the glove supposed to make playing games easier and improve your performance? Well, for starters, unlike the Power Glove, Reality Quest product didn't require any kind of setup. 
So the first thing you're gonna have to do is plug that glove into the PlayStation. Okay, and after you've plugged it in, the next step is strapping it on your hand. Simply place the back of the glove against your palm, find a comfortable position from which you can reach all the buttons, and then attach the strap around the back of your hand. Once you've got that in position, the second strap goes around the wrist, and you're ready to start playing. Both the PlayStation and the N64 would recognize the glove as a standard controller. No sensors needed to be set up or calibrated, and the glove would be compatible with the entire game library of both systems. Using technology created by the Ullman brothers that Reality Quest referred to as Wrist Motion Optical Sensing Technology, the glove let its users control traditional directional movements by simply bending the wrist, leaving the rest of your fingers free to use the other buttons. But the glove didn't just reposition the button layout of a standard controller. The glove also gave its users a decent amount of options for customization. To use the glove, you would position your wrist as if you were going to shake someone's hand. Bending your wrist upward would be the same as pressing up on the D-pad. Bending your wrist towards the left would equal a left D-pad button press, and so on. Thanks to the glove's customization options, you weren't stuck with this control scheme. You could easily invert the axis by holding the RQ button and L1 on the thumb button section. The RQ button also allowed you to choose between three wrist sensitivity options, loosest, default, and tightest. If you wanted to be able to control your character by barely bending your wrist, you would press the RQ button with the circle button to set the sensitivity to tightest. If you preferred making longer or more exaggerated movements, the RQ button and square would give you the loosest sensitivity. The glove would also let its users choose between three predefined action button layouts. These could be accessed by holding the RQ button and pressing one of the top three row buttons labeled A, B, and C. The A layout was the default layout. Here, triangle means triangle, square acts like square, and so on. The B layout would switch some of the shoulder and action buttons, while the C layout was supposedly going to be easier for players with larger hands to use. The glove came with a switch on the back that would let you choose between its three distinctive modes, digital, analog, or the real star feature of the glove, simulated analog. Simulated analog would allow games designed for digital only input to respond to the glove as if though it was an analog controlled game. This means that the character you were controlling on screen would respond to the glove based on how fast or how much pressure you applied to the movement with the glove. According to the glove's patent, if a user rotates his hand x1 degrees clockwise, a character can run at speed s1. This speed s1 will be maintained until the user rotates his hand another x1 degrees clockwise, whereupon the character will be caused to run at speed s2 and so forth. Reality Quest was keenly aware that in order to be successful, consumers were going to need to have a thorough understanding of how to use the glove and its many options. To that end, Reality Quest's website was filled with extremely detailed explanations for the various modes, button layouts, and other features of the glove. There was also a link that customers could use to submit their own tips and tricks for the glove and plans for an electronic magazine centered around the glove, though it doesn't appear to have had any issues released. Obviously, in 1997, internet access wasn't quite as ubiquitous as it is today, so Reality Quest included a VHS explaining how to use the glove with the PlayStation version. In 1999, Reality Quest released a Nintendo 64 version of the glove, this time for $49.99. That's nearly half the cost of the original PlayStation version, which would also see its price reduced. And yes, the Nintendo 64 version of the glove was even compatible with the Rumble Pack. By now, you might be wondering just how well does the glove actually work? Well, it had been about 20 years or so since I last used the glove in 1999, so Got myself reacquainted with it, and just like I remembered, it actually works pretty well as long as you're willing to take a little bit of time to get used to it. I would even go as far as to say that in some games, like driving games and surprisingly fighting games, the glove really can give you an advantage, again, if you take the time to get used to using it. The glove isn't going to make up for games programmed with poor controls like, say, Superman 64 but it's a perfectly serviceable alternative to a controller and arguably a better way to play some games. In my opinion, the glove's major downside is the same thing that makes it so unique, its form factor. Now, the glove itself isn't uncomfortable per se, but it is made out of a hard, high quality ABS plastic. So after a long play session of doing this, it can get a little bit tiresome and a little bit uncomfortable. Strangely, Reality Quest never marketed the glove as a way for players with a disability in one hand 
to be able to play games one-handed with the other. I imagine that the reason for this is that Reality Quest only ever made right-handed gloves. Now their marketing material and website did sort of address this by stating, Hand and finger movements are so natural that left-handed players can use the glove as well as right-handed gamers. Now, I'm not left-handed, but personally, I have my doubts. I imagine that the real reason why Reality Quest only made right-handed gloves was just to save money, as most people are right-handed. Though to be fair, I wasn't able to confirm this. Ultimately, the glove didn't sell as well as Reality Quest had hoped, and the company began working on shifting its focus in late 1999 going into 2000. On March 20th, 2000, Reality Quest announced that it was changing its name to RQ Interactive and began developing products for what it called Interactive TV. However, it appears that their website was taken offline after February of 2008. As far as I could tell from my research, their Beacon Box and ASIC chip never reached market, but it does appear that they at least manufactured TV remotes, though their website made no mention of how or where they could be purchased. The product section of RQ Interactive's website only stated that they would begin offering products soon. This section's text remained unchanged from March of 2000 all the way until the site went offline in February of 2008. Adam and Noah Ullman have both had very successful post-reality quest careers, working in important roles for companies such as Microsoft, Acclaim, and Razer. The glove never really caught on with gamers, but it wasn't for a lack of effort. Though it's barely remembered today, the glove was featured in magazine articles and advertisements for about two years. One of its creators, Adam Ullman, was even interviewed on Fox and CNN about the glove. Unfortunately for Reality Quest, all of the positive press that the glove received just wasn't enough. The glove's best feature, simulated analog, really has to be experienced firsthand to be appreciated. In the end, the initial high price point, and maybe more importantly, the stigma from other motion controllers like U-Force and the Power Glove were just too much for the glove to overcome. I'd like to thank Jenobi for contributing his vocal talents to this episode. You can check out his awesome gaming channel at youtube.com forward slash Jenobi. And if you'd like to help out the channel monetarily, you can do that at patreon.com forward slash wrestling with gaming. But most of all, thanks for watching.